White trios, sat then. So today is game day. I am off at the Hive. Barnet v Doncaster. Now this is going to be a tough game. We've had a few good wins. We recently beat top of the league, who was Plymouth, but Doncaster are now top of the league. It's a different cat to fish. They got relegated last year, so they're trying to prove a point to get back out of this league to get into League One. Hopefully, we can put a little stop on that, so to speak. Now, the teams ain't in just yet. We're going with the same team because, let's be honest, at the moment, it's very hard to change a winning team. So we'll wait and see what happens. Doncaster's got a couple of players who could be naughty if they're selected. So I'll bring you a bit more footage as we go. But one of their danger men is John Marquis. And to be honest with you, we need to keep him quiet. If we keep him quiet, that's 50% of the job done. Now, Doncaster are unbeaten in the last five games. So they're looking at it as they're the favourites. But let's be honest, we can pull right out of the hat sometimes. So let's wait and see what happens. Right, so the team's in and it looks like we're going with a 4-1-4-1, which I kind of agree with, actually. You know, start off a little bit defensive and then, you know, break them down to our level. Keep it nil-nil at half time, and then you've got 45 minutes, shit or bust, basically. So the team is Vickers in goal, Harry Taylor right back, Nelson and Santos at centre half, Johnson at left back. Just in front, Tom Champion, so it's good to see him back in the starting eleven again. In front of him is Weston and Jack Taylor. On the right, you've got Valetti. On the left, you've got Campbell Rice, and up front on his own is John Akinde. So it is a strong team. People could ask it's a bit defensive, but at the end of the day, it looks like we're being hard to beat, and... Why not, you know? Let's break them down and then we can go at them. John Akindi, a mistake from Doncaster player, pass it back to his keeper, didn't see John Akindi. One play to do on a pass. 1-1, Doncaster equalise. I don't know, what do I say really? Um, just wasn't concentrating, simple as that. Vickers has come running out and he slotted it into his close near post. 1-1. 2-1 Doncaster, should never have been a goal. Handball by their player, absolute mixed match. They've got our player around the fucking throat and they've gave us nothing. Absolute joke by the Lino and the fucking ref there. Embarrassing, absolutely embarrassing. Lino, you won't As you can hear by the fans, ain't that me? 3-0, 3-1, sorry, Doncaster. Barnett still asleep after that second goal gone in. Um, it's embarrassing. Right, so it's half time, it's 3 1 to Doncaster. And to be honest with you, in patches, Doncaster have played some nice football and we've been chasing shadows. At 1 1, we had a chance of John Akindi went round the keeper, he slid it into 2 1, it's a different game, but unfortunately he knocked it too wide and that defender came in and cleared it. They went up the other end and scored, it's 2 2. Uh, Beg your pardon, it's 2 1. To be honest with you, we were fanning around too much, arguing over the goal, then focusing on the game, that we'd let it slip and gone 3 1 down. Like I said, when we're chasing shadows sometimes, when we went 3 1 down, we should have changed it. 4 1, 4 1 ain't working. Why carry on to the end of the half at 4 1, 4 1? Fucking get someone off and get 4 4 2 or something, because it's no good to us. Any changes I would make, Campbell Rice has got to come up because he's been non-existent in that fucking first half. Absolute shocking. It is a perfect game for Gambin to come on, but I don't think he'll get the creativity. Nelson hasn't had a fantastic half either. I mean, like I said, we've been chasing shadows. We need to get someone in there to get the game by the scruff of the neck and crack on. But at the moment, it don't seem like there's anyone available to do that. Duncan, what do you think? I'm not being bitter. I'm just saying as I speak as I find. Now, the officials at this level are shocking. Today, probably the worst half an hour after the first thing I've ever seen. Linesman's a joke. Referees lost the game completely. If someone falls over, he's giving it as a free kick. Um, 
it's all about it's all about the officials so far, and it shouldn't be like that. Not you know, but at this level we're used to it. But today is shocking. So it looks like we've got the Mike Dean of League Two refereeing our game today. So I've just got back home, and the game ended 3-1 to Doncaster. Now let's start with the good things. Well, I say it's good things. It's good things for Doncaster fans. Now credit where credit's due. You play some good football. It's just a shame you throw yourselves on the floor all the fucking time trying to get a free kick or any little thing an advantage you can. You was knocking it around us like we weren't even there. We was chasing shadows at times. So I don't see why you need to throw yourself on the floor and play into the ref's hand. Now we get on to what really happened with Barnet. Now, what can we take from that game? It was just shit. Simple as that. Now, we had about three chances in that game. One of them, Doncaster actually gave us and we scored from. You know, a back pass from one of their players. John O'Kindies took it around the keeper, slotted it in. We went 1-0 up. From then, don't think we had many more. I can recall three. John O'Kindy went round the keeper again, but unfortunately the defender came in and cleared it. If he scored that, like I said, it would have been 2-1 to Barnet. But if my auntie had bollocks, she would have been my uncle. Now, to be honest with you, Doncaster's first goal, I'm not really sure what happened there. And I don't even think the, the, the players know what happened because it looked like we was anticipating the cross because Vickers come flying out his goal and it got slotted into the near post. The second goal, and this is where it gets fucking silly. Doncaster players was resting their players to the floor and the ref and the line I don't give it and they handballed it into the goal and it's still allowed to stand. Now while we're standing around arguing over why that goal shouldn't have stood we haven't concentrated and they've gone and scored a third pretty much straight after. Now this is where the romance has died with the whole Rossi in charge and we need a proper manager because a proper manager would have calmed us down, got us concentrated, back onto that game but no we were still fucking crying over that goal that wasn't given which is Sunday league fucking standard we're arguing with the ref and not focusing what's actually going on we've conceded a fucking third one a good what 20 yards out i'm sorry but this is not fucking good enough now like i said yeah they are head and shoulders above most teams in that league but for us to rock up and not show any fucking passion or desire we went with a 4-1-4-1 looking like we're going with a fucking draw now i know i said that i'd be happy to keep a draw and then go for it in the second half but we was 3-1 down in that first half and rossi still kept it 4-1-4-1 not fucking good enough. When we went 3-1 down, that's when the change would have been made. It should have been fucking made then. Not, I know, about 20 minutes into the fucking second half, I'll make the change. You're 3-1 down. Why are we not making a change as soon as? It shows that you don't have a plan B. It shows that it, you're not good enough for the role when it comes up against teams who can play football. And like I said, against Luton, we could get a slap. We did against Doncaster. When it comes up against a big team, we get our pants pulled down and we get slapped. It's as simple as that. And I don't think that we've got the right men in charge when it comes to the big games. Is it too late to get Martin Allen back? Or is that going a little bit too far? Just a couple of more things that I want to talk about because I'm not happy about it. Now, every time that they had a cross, they put it in. Sometimes there was two of our players on one of theirs, they still managed to get the cross in. We couldn't close anything down. I don't understand it. Now, if I can see it from the stands, and other people around me can fucking see it. How can't anyone on that fucking bench see that then? I ain't got no coaching badges. But apparently, I know fuck all. I tell you fucking one thing though. My Sunday team wouldn't fucking ever play like that. I know for a fact. Because if I was ever 3-1 down and I was going out with a 4-1-4-1, I would have fucking changed it right there and then. Because let's be honest, it's shit or bust. Throw the kitchen fucking sink at it. You might as well lose 10 fucking one. But at least you're fucking going for it and not just sitting back. Because it was fucking stupid. Absolutely fucking stupid sitting there. Watching that 4-1. 4-1, you're 3-1 down. Then it comes to the 60th minute, you make a fucking change and you go 4-4-2. And then eventually you went 3 at the fucking back. And it looked like we actually started to play a little bit better, but unfortunately we still couldn't fucking get anywhere. Not good enough, simple as that. But we move forward now. We've got Newport next week. And to be honest with you, we might even bang them 5-6-0 and then everyone probably think the romance is back and we've forgotten about it. All I'm saying is, is when you come up against teams who can play football, there's no fucking plan B. It doesn't even seem that you've got fucking plan A half the fucking time. It's not hard to play football. All you had to do was set the players out. Now, you tried that. It didn't work. But all I'm asking is fucking change it up a bit. Don't wait to the 60th minute to then go, I know it's not working. Not fucking good enough. We was beaten and we was beaten well today. Now, if there's any positive that I can take, it's probably just Santos. How he played today, he's, he actually done well. And there was times where he had to fucking do the midfield's job by running through there and passing the ball through. Now, if we didn't have him, maybe it could have been a lot worse today. 
I don't know. But all I'm saying is, things need to fucking change. We need a permanent fucking manager now. Like I said, next week, when against Newport, we'll probably fucking bang them 10-0. All oh, right, that's a little bit dramatic, but still. So we go forward. Just before I end this video, I just want to wish me nephew a happy 12th birthday. He's a massive Barnet fan. Unfortunately, we didn't get the win today, mate, but nevertheless. So guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave any comments below. Follow me on Twitter. It's in the description. I'll see most of you at the Newport game, where I will still be fucking ranting, despite win, lose, or draw, because that's what I am. So until next time, I will see you later.